Welcome to the Healthy Skin Show with Jennifer Fugo, where we're flipping everything you've been told about your chronic skin issues upside down and connecting you with alternative solutions your dermatologist never told you about. Welcome back to episode number 261 of the Healthy Skin Show. In today's episode, I want to talk about a very frustrating situation for listeners struggling with urticaria or chronic hives, where it's really unclear, even after extensive allergy testing, what could be triggering this reaction. The term chronic hives includes situations where you get hives, which are more formally called wheels in literature, as well as angioedema, or swelling under the skin. Dermatographia is another form of urticaria that creates hive-like patterns on the skin due to pressure from anything, even your clothing. I know how frustrating this condition can be after working with many clients in my virtual practice who just want their hives and swelling to stop. I'm reminded of a woman named Sonia who struggled with hives and dermatographia so badly that she couldn't even wear tight fitting yoga pants because the pressure alone would trigger an outbreak. As I'm sure you can relate, hives are not fun. And when the situation is severe, Urticaria is extremely detrimental to your quality of life. If you feel stuck by this extremely maddening diagnosis, let's talk about what could be going on and why you can't seem to get the hives to stop. The first thing you need to know about urticaria, hives, dermatographia, and even angioedema is that from a functional perspective, they are indicative of histamine overload. Histamine overload is a situation where your body is no longer able to handle the immense amount of histamine present. So your system is essentially swimming in a gigantic pool of histamine that it cannot process fast enough due to a variety of factors. Sometimes there are genetic snips in histamine degrading enzymes, namely diamine oxidase, also known as DAO, and histamine and methyltransferase, also known as HMNT. But I should mention that this is not necessarily everyone's issue, especially if the onset is relatively new for you. Other factors have to do with environmental issues. Mold is one of them (laughs) that can destabilize mast cells, as well as gut microbiome dysbiosis with the presence of certain organisms that make histamine. Yes, you heard that right. Certain gut bugs make histamine. So much, in fact, that your gut actually becomes a histamine production factory that you cannot escape. High histamine foods only make things worse, DAO enzyme supplements might not be very helpful, and this is actually really common and why I don't often recommend them anymore. And so you end up leaning hard on antihistamine medications, sometimes multiple meds at the same time, and even possibly the use of mast cell stabilizing medications, which may or may not help. I feel I should mention that long-term use of antihistamines has its own set of problems, including poor sleep, increased risk of dementia, depression, anxiety, and fatigue, decreased DAO production in the GI tract, as well as increased risk of acute liver injury. And you might even end up trying a biologic called Zolair, which may or may not help. My point here is that until you get to the bottom of what's creating this histamine overload situation, you will likely continue to struggle with urticaria. If this topic interests you further, I have a two-part deep dive on the concept of histamine overload linked up in this episode's show notes. Now, one of the lesser known connections of hives or chronic urticaria is the incidence of an autoimmune thyroid disease known as Hashimoto's thyroiditis. So if you've been struggling with hives for some time, it's worthwhile to dive down this rabbit hole, especially since one recent paper from 2019 noted that 25 to 30% of urticaria cases also had underlying Hashimoto's along with anti-TPO antibodies. Additionally, stabilizing thyroid hormone levels with medication was actually helpful in reducing the severity of itching. 
It's also possible to develop hives in a state of hyperthyroidism, which is also hyperactive thyroid function, due to kinin activation. And other data suggests a connection between chronic hives and autoimmunity in general. One study from Israel reviewing data from 12,778 patients over the course of 17 years found a strong association between those with chronic urticaria and autoimmune disease. And if you want to talk about testing at least your thyroid and seeing if that's an issue, simply testing TSH alone isn't enough. In this case, to identify elevations in antibodies or the presence of Hashimoto's. The reason is that you can have a normal TSH level with the presence of antibodies, which is why doing more extensive testing is prudent. A full thyroid panel that would be helpful includes TSH, free T4, free T3, TPO antibodies, and thyroglobulin antibodies to help determine if Hashimoto's is also present. These are part of a larger panel of blood labs that I recommend clients to get. And again, I have a resource for you over on the show notes of this episode. That all said, many autoimmune conditions share overlapping triggers that can hide under these types of skin issues that I've already mentioned. This can be seen in another 2019 paper, which discusses the connections of chronic urticaria to celiac disease, insufficient vitamin D levels, asymptomatic H. pylori infections, parasitic infections, and gut microbiome dysbiosis, especially marked by lower levels of key beneficial bacterial strains, including Acromantia mucinophila and Fecalibacterium prosnitsi. So it's honestly not all that surprising that hives, thyroid issues, and autoimmunity are potentially linked. Before I share any tips or strategies, I want to be very clear that this is a journey. If you're hoping for one thing to solve all of this for you, you will likely be disappointed. I say this to help you manage your expectations because there's too much information online that tries to treat what I'd call band-aids as if they're solutions when they're not. These options that I'm going to share with you are also band-aids because ultimately you have to address your root cause combo that's driving histamine overload. But it doesn't mean that the band-aids aren't worth trying, often together at the same time. Because the reality is that when you're on this journey, you need tools to help you be more comfortable while you work on the root causes. So here are four steps to start dealing with urticaria. First, you must support your phase two liver detox pathways with the right nutrients necessary to process toxins that are made by the unfriendly gut bugs I mentioned before. You can learn more about why this step is so important in my liver detox skin rash connection series linked up in the show notes of this episode. Clients have found amino acids such as glycine extremely helpful, along with my favorite liver support supplement called P2 Detox Balance from quellshop.com. Using them in a therapeutic range is important. So taking glycine twice a day between three to five grams on top of food intake, along with using the P2 Detox Balance, commonly three capsules taken twice a day with or without food. Secondly, immunoglobulins are crucial to help reduce your reactivity. I've seen a lot of great results in histamine overload clients who add oral immunoglobulin supplements into their routine. I discussed the reasons why this is helpful and what immunoglobulins are in a two-part series here on the Healthy Skin Show. Again, I will link this in the show notes for you to easily find. These supplements likely will be used at a higher dose than what's listed on the bottle and can be very helpful taken before bed if you start developing hives at night, since the immunoglobulins help to drive down the IgE response happening in the GI tract. My favorite immunoglobulin options called Mega IgG are available on quellshop.com in both capsules and powder. And actually, guys, the powder is really great and makes taking higher doses easier since it reduces the number of pills you have to swallow and you can mix it into pretty much anything. 
third, a low histamine diet can be helpful. And I say this as someone who really dislikes putting someone on an elimination diet. That said, a low histamine diet is a band-aid and will not solve the underlying dysbiosis or histamine overload problem. It will simply help to reduce the amount of histamine rich or releasing foods in your gut, which can actually make you feel better. But I'm not going to lie. A low histamine diet is hard to follow and extremely limited because the most extreme version of this diet eliminates all leftovers. Yes, that means that leftovers are off the table because as food sits out beyond cooking, the histamine level increases. So this is one reason why the low histamine diet is very challenging to follow. And long-term use of this diet can result in nutrient deficiencies and food fear, or in some cases, complete hatred for the act of eating, which is why if you choose this option, you still have to do the work on the root causes so that you can transition back to a more normal eating pattern where you can tolerate higher histamine foods again. And number four, start a root cause deep dive. If you're not sure how to get started, my Skin Rash Root Cause eFinder is a huge help and it's free. You can find the free guide over at skintriggers.com. This is important because what you don't want to do is only use the other band-aids that I mentioned above and assume you're stuck like this for the rest of your life. It is absolutely possible to stop urticaria. I've seen this happen in countless clients who felt like they were doomed. Now let's return to Sonia, whom I mentioned at the beginning of this episode. I'll share with you what happened when she finally learned what her root cause combo was using my Skin Rash Rebuild group program. Sonia sent me this message and she shared that it's been weeks since I've had a dermatographia flare. I've had a lot of wins. I can eat tomatoes and age cheeses. I celebrated my 30th birthday in Mexico and I actually got to enjoy lots of yummy food and not have a flare. I'm currently taking immunoglobulins, P2 detox, and continuing the breathing exercises. Joining the Skin Rash Rebuild was the best thing I could have done. I can't find the words to thank you and your team. Your program has made me feel like myself again, and I am so thankful. Thank you for everything, and I can't wait to finish the remaining protocols in the program. I haven't cried over my skin issues in months thanks to the Skin Rash Rebuild. I'm finally me again, and my friends and family have definitely noticed. And Sonia is not the only person that this process has helped. So yes, there is hope. It's not a quick fix, but you can improve your body's ability to process histamine once again. So if you've got any questions or thoughts to share about this, or you want to see the many resources I've put together for you, head on over to skinterrupt.com forward slash 261 so we can keep the conversation going. And then take a moment to share this episode with anyone you know who is struggling with urticaria and the other forms of urticaria that I talked about in this episode so that they know that they have options and they don't necessarily have to be stuck with these conditions for the rest of their life. Before you head off for your day, take a moment, rate and review The Healthy Skin Show. Make sure to hit that subscribe button so you can tune in each week for new inspiration, research, tips and strategies that'll help you on your journey to rebuild healthy skin and let's connect over on Instagram. I'm at Jennifer Fugo. Thank you so much for tuning in and I look forward to diving deeper with you in the next episode.